Rub up your engines! If you think you can save money buying a used car, you should see the money you can save if you buy a used boat. My neighbor in Rhode Island salvages boats for a living, and he's building a salvage boat here. He bought this thing from Buffalo, New York, where it's had for like 15, 16 years, brought it to Rhode Island, and he's converting it into a salvage boat so we can get salvage boats, fix them, and sell them on. Now, as you can see, this is a serious boat. The things are huge. There's the other one over there. It is a huge boat. It used to have a tiny wheelhouse up in the front. His wife designed this gigantic one. It's gonna have a giant wheelhouse, and it's gonna be used to salvage boats on the East Coast. And unlike cars, which are often salvaged because they're junk, there's a lot of boats just sitting around. People aren't using them. You can get them pretty cheap. He's got one out to sea here. He's hiding way out here. That some guy left while he was in prison. They broke away from the mooring, became salvaged. He salvaged it. The guy doesn't want it anymore. He got it for nothing, and he's going to sell it. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the boat. The guy just went to prison, the boat sat there, just sits there floating up and down. And sure, you need to paint it and stuff like that, but structurally, boats can be very sound, and you can get them for a fraction of their original cost. In the case of this giant boat, he's gonna turn it into a salvage boat. We'll go inside and we'll look at the stuff that he's doing to it. Now, as we walk aboard, you can see this is a big ship. As I said, his wife designed all this, and they're building it. Because the original cabin was just the very front. This was it. This is the original front cabin. They're building it all out. Because they're going to take it on the high seas as a salvage ship. You can see it's got the front. They got it cleaned off because they're painting it. We're driving the ball forward, but as you can see, we go to the back of the boat. They have a control panel so they can steer it, control it. It's got dual motors. When they're backing up, they're doing salvage work. You can see. I have my sticks there. You got a big old crane for doing the salvage work. Now, if you're gonna get a boat this big and buy it new for salvage, it would cost a small fortune. That's why he bought this boat that was sitting for a decade and a half in Buffalo, floating around doing nothing, brought it to Rhode Island, and he's turning it into a rather large salvage boat. Now, as we go down, there we go. You can see it's in the process of being turned into Showers, sleeping quarters, kitchen. He's going all out on this thing. They have a full kitchen, and interesting enough, they have heat pumps. Water comes in here, you can get cool air out of it, and as long as it's above 32 degrees, it's a heat pump to give heat to both heat and air conditioning, the whole thing. And you can see these guys are doing a bang up job. Check it out. Look at it, burns. It's beautiful. Well, let's go down the hall here and look at the Detroit diesels that power this thing. As we climb inside, what do we got inside here? It's kind of dark, so we'll get out my little flashlight. And voila, we got twin turbocharged Detroit diesels. We're talking about some serious horsepower. It also uses a lot of fuel. Diesel fuel, of course. And as you can see, it's also got a Detroit diesel here. We're running a generator system. Okay, a lot of electricity is one of these things. Everything runs on diesel here. You can see there's a little control panel for all the electricity for the generator. These have side exhausts going out way above the water line. They don't want to put it in the back because they often back up picking up salvage boats, they don't want water getting sucked in, so the exhaust is on the sides, up high, way above the water line. And here is the battery system, he's got regular batteries, on the other side, he's got lithium ion batteries, and another generator that will automatically come on, so it can run all the batteries up to full charge, and with the lithium ion batteries over here, he said he can run all the heating and air conditioning all night, without having had to run the motors and make a lot of noise so people can't sleep. Now this ship was originally built in the 1960s. Back in those days, they built them strong. Steel and aluminum on this boat is really thick, and the advantage of, it was sitting in Buffalo. So it was sitting Lake Erie water, which is fresh water, not salt water. You can find a boat that's been sitting in fresh water, you're gonna have a lot less crap you're gonna have to deal with, versus one that's sitting in the ocean in salt water. But even so, you can see his crane here. He's got some rust, he's gonna need all new cables, and he's gonna have sandblast and clean it all up. But when he's done, he's going to have one ginormous salvage boat at a fraction of the cost of what a new one would be. And of course, the same tells true for sailboats, motorboats, yachts big or small. You're gonna save a ton of money 
buying it used and either buying one like this and fixing it up for what you want or if you just want something for screwing around in maybe not fix it up much at all as long as it floats and the motor works but if you wonder what that noise is he's welding and he's welding aluminum if you're gonna mess around with a boat like this you better have a good aluminum welder this guy's a really good welder but if you have an aluminum boat and you don't design it you can re-weld what's already there and fix it that now but you do need a good welder aluminum isn't that easy to weld now once he's done getting this all fixed up and he's putting it in the water i have plans he does salvage boats and sometimes it's kind of like pirates it's just like tow truck drivers on a highway if there's an abandoned boat sometimes these guys will be racing there to see who's the first one to hook up to the boat and get it sometimes it even involves fist fights and i'd love to be on that filming it i'm trying to talk him into making a whole series about that it would be rather fascinating when you think about it and i'll give you one big tip about buying a used boat realize the motor is often worth more than the boat this is the 300 horsepower Mercury. They go for a lot of money. If you are buying a used boat, make sure you get the motor checked out to see that it's in good running order because that often is worth much more than the boat itself. Always keep that in mind when you're getting a boat. There's plenty of holes around, but motors can cost a small fortune. So maybe you already have a motor and you're looking for a haul. You can get a great deal on buying a haul. So unlike salvage cars, which I often frown upon unless you're a mechanic, a salvage boat now that's a completely different story boats then most of the time just sit there in the water they're mainly toys for people and if you're looking for a toy yourself don't poo poo getting a nice salvage boat and getting a really good price on it now perhaps you might like one like this slide it's been sitting around maybe a little bit too long with trees growing out of it but there's plenty of good boats lying around either floating in the water or sitting at a boat yard just waiting for somebody with the right amount of cash to get a good deal and sure you're probably not gonna buy a boat this size with giant propellers on it but this boat is being fixed up to salvage other boats so it'll end up making money maybe you just want a toy something to float around with there are lots of good salvage boat deals out there that you can save yourself a ton of money think of all the friends you got with boats what happens to them 99 percent of the time they're just sitting there doing nothing they might as well get some money back and it's a hobby for most people so you don't get much when you sell a hobby toy so take advantage of that don't throw your money away on a new one get yourself a nice salvaged boat and if i already got a motor hey half the battle's already gone more than half the battle you just need something to hook it up to and after all they're boats they float right you can go any place where there's water buy one and bring it to you for example this was bought in buffalo and guess what it went down the old erie canal hudson river now it's in rhode island and they're going to turn it into a salvage vessel and it'll be worth probably four or five times what he paid for it in the first place now all i got to do is convince him to let me ride on his next salvage mission and hoist the pirate flag on it and see what happens <laughs> So stay tuned when we hoist anchor and head to the high seas. And here's some bonus questions and answers. BR322480 says, I don't need brake lights. My 2002 Ford Explorer. I push on the brakes, the brake lights don't come on. The fuses are good and the bulbs are good. You probably just have a bad brake switch. When you step on your brake pedal, up there on the top that you can't see until you're crawling under put a flashlight, is a brake switch and when the brake switch breaks not when you break it but when it b-r-e-a-k not b-r-a-k-e when it breaks down it won't send electricity and that's probably all it is all you got to do is get yourself a little test light go under there and test the wire coming in it should have power at all time then step on the brake and the other wire should have power only when you step on the brake and when you pick it up the power goes off if you don't get any power you need a switch that's all now if on the power side that feeds it there's no power then you got a short somewhere in the electrical system not sending electricity to the brake light but usually it's just a stupid switch all auto parts stores sell them you can easily go up there and change it yourself it's not complex it's just kind of dirty because you got to sit with your head on the back where your feet go and look up so vacuum all the dirt out first you're going to get a bunch of crud in your hair when you do it so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.